Okay, in this video, we're going to be deploying serverless HTTP endpoints with GCP Cloud Functions. So this video is a follow-up to the GCP Managed Instance Group tutorial. And in that tutorial, we deployed a very simple, simple Python microservice using the Flask framework that talked to Firebase database. And so what we're going to do is we're going to deploy a set of Python-based serverless functions using Cloud Functions. Now the goal is to create an API that's functionally equivalent to the API that we did in the uh, GC Managed Instance Groups. I call it tongue-in-cheek in places, Flasky. It's Flask-like. It's not quite Flask. It does use Flask objects. Uh, it's uh, all in one module, but it's it's not quite Flask. So I call it Flasky sort of tongue-in-cheek. And so by the end of this video, you should be able to know how to deploy Python-based HTTP endpoints as cloud functions using Terraform. And so what we'll cover is actually building that Python code into cloud functions. We're going to use Firebase as a document database. The first time we deploy this, it's going to be deployed uh, on the public internet with no security, no authorization. And so we'll do that. We'll show the API how it works. And then we will secure those HTTP endpoints with um, JWT uh, token authorization, which is a variant of OAuth OIDC. And that's how we'll secure them. And then at the end of the process, we will clean up all resources and be good stewards of our cloud environments. So what is serverless? Um, I guess there's there's three key characteristics. The first one is the, the whole, what does serverless mean? It does not mean that there's no servers. There obviously is servers. Um, you don't manage the servers. Google manages the servers. Underneath the cover, all this stuff runs as containers. When you deploy the code, GCP is deploying containers. Um, so it, it handles the provisioning of the servers for you. Another way to think of this is Cloud Functions is the smallest and cheapest amount of compute you can buy from Google. Essentially, you gave give Google some, some code, in this case, Python, but this supports uh, all sorts of things like Go, Java, .NET, ABPHP. Have to sh be sure which ones support ABPHP. But um, the idea is you, you give it the code and then the system, Google, will invoke the code from various triggers. Now, in the case of this example, the trigger is HTTP endpoints. But these types of cloud functions are used all over the place for event processing, stream processing. Um, it's, it's sort of the glue that binds a lot of services together. Um, so it's not just HTTP endpoints, but that is a very simple use case that we'll cover. Now, another key attribute is automatic scaling. The Google Cloud Collections scale up and down based on demand and load. And that is very different than the, the uh, managed instance groups one, where we had to explicitly set up the rule of 60%. And it, and it would manage it for us, but we had to set that rule up. It does it automatically here with these serverless uh, cloud functions. And then it's pay as you go. Uh, when you... When we did the, the managed instance groups, we had these VMs with these really small um, APIs, and we we're paying for that VM up all, all the time. Here, we're just paying when our code actually gets invoked, number of requests, execution, and memory allocation. And so it's, it's much cheaper, particularly in these sandbox environments where if you look at my Google account uh, on this one, it hasn't even cracked a dollar uh, after I've been working on this for a while because it's just so cheap. Let's talk about the actual topology of what we're building here. Uh, within a project, we are going to do um, the three endpoints or three cloud functions: good to go, candidates, and candidate. And candidate handles um, post and gets, which is a little bit different than the other environments. And this is because we we opted not to use an API gateway. Sort of the ethos of Google Cloud is to keep the simple things simple. All right, so to run this project, there's a set of prerequisites you need. And I have a video out there called GCP and Terraform Easy Setup. You've got the Google Cloud account, obviously. You've got the G Cloud CLI. You need Terraform. You also need zip to zip up the functions, and that's included in the check ENV script. And so um, this is all you need to get started. And so what I want to do is I have a Ubuntu development environment. I'm just going to copy this code into that. And that will pull it down. 
and send the directory. Put me in the right directory. So the first thing I want to do is run check env. And let's go, hey, you don't have credentials to JSON. So what I'm going to do is I am going to upload from my laptop credentials to JSON. And now let's do check env. All right. Now I need to enable the API that I need for this project. And I use a script on that uh, API setup. So I'm going to run that. And then I'm going to give it about four or five minutes to make all those APIs uh, enabled. OK, those APIs are enabled. And now we're going to run um, apply. And while it's doing that, let's go back to the documentation and I'll basically give a run through of the build process. The first step is we package up the Python code. We zip it into a zip file and we're going to use a checksum on the zip file to check changes. So like AWS, we use a checksum. Uh, if I make a code change, I rezip it, checksum is going to be different. It'll pick it up and reapply. Now, uh, after that's done, we deploy the infrastructure that we need to actually service up the cloud functions. And so we need a storage bucket for the code, which is more like Azure than AWS. Azure, you have to explicitly give a storage account. Here, you need a storage bucket. And then we deploy the cloud functions, and we assign, assign a role to the cloud functions to allow them to access Firebase. Now, the first time we deploy it, it's deployed publicly anonymously. Anybody can hit the endpoints. And then after we finish the build, we do the validate SH, and it should tell us if our uh, API is working properly. Okay, the build is complete. So it ran validate, everything passed. So I'm going to go and copy this guy right here. And let's go into uh, a new web browser and hit that and say, okay, we've it's, it's up and running. Good to go is running. So we see the good to go endpoint. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the GCP console and we're going to take a look at what we got built. So in the console, the first thing we're going to do is cloud run. And this will show you uh, all your cloud functions. And so I'm going to click on GTG. All right. Once I'm in GTG, I'm going to click on source. And you can see it's all one module. So it's more like the Azure example. We're using Flask for the response objects. Um, and so I'm going to do a couple of things. First, I'm going to say, I'm going to change this to, well, I got to edit source code. And this is, in AWS and GCP, you can make these little quick modifications in the console. So I'm going to hit that, hit save and deploy. All right, after a few minutes, the service will rebuild and the cache will get busted and you'll see, hey, modified is now true. So now let's go into um, Postman and let's take a look at these APIs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, copy this URL, go into Postman and say, get, we'll send that. And we should get the, the modified one, which rule. Um, and so that's the first endpoint. The next endpoint is candidates. And you can see I've got a bunch of candidates here um, from previous runs. And so I also have the candidate, and I can say homey one. So that's the third endpoint. And then the fourth input is a post. And that's what I'm going to put, uh, just put Mike. And it should add Mike. And then if I go back to get and say candidates, you'll see. Uh, I should have Mike in here somewhere. So those are the four endpoints. And notice that these are valid anywhere. If you're sitting at your desk now, you could hit these endpoints if they were up at the right time. So there's no securing them whatsoever. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to walk through securing. So let's go to the documentation. So now what we need to do is we need to modify the anonymous variable. So let's go to our code and let's say to 0, 1, Cloud functions and let's do a nano variables TF. And then you get to the end here 
And so this is where we want to say, um, we want to change this to false. Save it. And over here, and then what we want to do is back up one directory, because you got to run from the main directory. And we're going to do apply, and it's going to, first thing, it's, it's going to redeploy that zip code. So that modified thing that I made earlier, that's got. That's going to be replaced because it's not in my source repository. But it's going to rezip the file, turn off uh, the anonymous uh, functionality, and require the header. So I'm going to hit apply. Okay, so the build succeeded. And it went ahead and uh, made those changes. Now, you'll notice everything's still passing. And the reason because of that is we talked about when we made the code change for the modified text and the good to go endpoint that uh, it took a minute. And so it's the same issue here. Is there server side caching going on? We got to wait for that cache to expire and this thing to be redeployed with authorization turned on. Okay, so we waited a few minutes. Validate, run validate. And you say it's all forbidden because we've, we've removed that anonymous access. So now we need to figure out how do we actually call it? And so there's this token here, which you have to put in an authorization header. So we'll go back to Postman and we'll go back to GTE details equals true. And now when I run it, it's going to say forbidden. And so what I need to do is I need to go to the authorization header and I'm going to change it to be um, API key and the key value is authorization. And then what you want to do is go to this guy here. You got to be very careful because um, it's um, kind of tricky to copy and paste this. If you forget one character, it's invalid. Now there's generally toolkits associated with doing with this. Um, and also this bearer token is only valid for like an hour. So even if this function, this, this value would leak somewhere on the internet, it's, it is a very limited time frame where you're compromised. You're still compromised, but it's a limited, more limited time frame. So I think in in a grand scheme of things, this is probably the most secure of all three of the cloud native ways of securing your APIs because it's really a, a variant of OAuth. So let's go and copy that and put that in the header. And now let's hit send. And you can see I'm now calling the API correctly. So if I take the authorization back, it'll it'll remove it. So now I could go and do candidates. That list again, again, all keyed on this authorization. And this key is only valid for um, an hour. Um, so there, are, like I said, there's toolkits associated with uh, this framework where you can not have to do uh, sort of the manual copy and paste where you can actually say, okay, Here's uh, how I authenticate. Give me a bearer token. Um, so that's pretty much it for the code. Um, you know, at this point, you want to be good stewards of your cloud accounts. So I'm going to do destroy. I am going to go to the GCP specific things um, from this. The, the first one is the keep things simple mantra that uh, GCP seems to have is yes, there's an API gateway. But for this very simple case that we had, uh, cloud functions with it, you know, automatically attached HTTP endpoints, they, they give me everything I need. Um, now there's, you know, I probably could do better routing with that candidate endpoint where I check for Git and post. But I, you know, like I said, I was trying to keep it simple because that's what Azure, or what, that's what GCP tries to do, keep things simple. Eventually, I think I'm going to do a video with how we connect these APIs, these service APIs to OAuth uh, with like a, a Okta or Pang ID. Um, in which case, when I do that, I will most definitely have to add an API gateway to the solution to be able to support that. The second thing is a storage bucket is needed just like Azure. Um, so when you define your, uh, you know, your, your cloud functions, or your Azure functions, you you have to say, okay, this is this is the you have to explicitly set up a storage bucket or a storage account for them to store. The third thing is dealing with API management. That's unique for GCP. You have to run the API setup. I typically don't do that in the Terraform code, or if I did, I would do it in another Terraform code. I wouldn't do it in the project code. So that is something specific to GCP. Um, we also notice when we change things. It took a while. It takes like a, a minute or two for like if I change authorization for the caching to, to get busted or even making a small code change. 
You can make code changes in the console like AWS. Not recommended to do that, but if you just need a simple, quick and dirty, let me try this one thing to see if it fixes, you, you can do it. Uh, although I think that's probably out of the ordinary for ongoing development. And then finally, I would give uh, the way it does, the secures the API, the cloud native way with the geauth header is probably the most secure of the three. Um, the most secure would be, in my order, would be GCP with the auth header, um, AWS with the, you know, we, we use the AWS v4 signature with a user ID or access key and secret key. And then the one that's least secure, I, I, my money would be on um, Azure Functions. The, the, the function key stuff is uh, not, not as robust as the other two.